Hello everyone, uh, I'm Yuan from the Faculty of Pharmacy, UKM. So welcome to the last class of this short toxicology module. So hooray, <laughs> finally it's the end. Right, so um, it's going to be a light class actually. Um, basically I'm just more like introducing or going through some of the common toxicants in Philippines. Okay, so we've got uh, a list of common toxicants from your uh, outline of the class and there's some part on the regulatory aspects that I'll cover at the end of the class as well. So to make things a little bit easier to understand, so I've recategorized the whole list based on the textbook, right, into different components, right, so such as pesticides, metals, heavy metals in a way, solvents, vapors, radiations, right, and also um, animal venoms, plants, biotoxins, food, and also medications, right. Uh, those with a tick are those which are covered by my colleague, other colleagues in their earlier classes, so I won't, I'll try not to repeat them, so in, cause, in case it causes a lot of redundancy, so then it makes things It'll be not so interesting, isn't it? <laughs> so, um, as we are from the pharmacy school, so I would like to start off with the medications first. Right, so for medication, is a very specific uh, group of toxicants uh, to be overdosed, isn't it? Uh, because it's something that you need to actually get it from a healthcare professional right, for most of the time. Right, so you can actually get it from the doctors, the pharmacists, nurses, right, so to pass it the correct, the correct drug, right, and the correct information to the patient, and also the caretaker will also help out in the management of the medication as well, at home, isn't it? So based on um, the Philippines news, so there's a report in 2015, uh, so um, for the elderly patients, so these are the five top five common toxicants. So for the medication side, so benzodiazepine is something you can find over here. Right. So to prevent the overdose, so uh, it's recommended um, that um, the administration of medication should be supervised, right, and it can be stored properly, obviously labeled properly, prevent polypharmacy, right, and also um, to help to clear off the old drugs in a way as well, so that to prevent over excess of such drugs to reduce the risk of toxicity. Right. Um, and so these are the lists that we're going to cover, especially those in highlighted, those are the, for the highlighted ones. So let's go through them one by one. So starting off with benzodiazepines. So a person could be getting benzodiazepines from the doctors when they complain about difficulty in sleeping. So they might get diazepam or clonazepam, lorazepam and so on. So basically it acts as a central nervous system depressant. That's why it can cause the sedative effect. So basically it acts on the GABA-A receptor. So what happens that it binds uh, together with the GABA onto the receptor. Um, to cause a prolonged opening of the CL channel so that more of the CL ions can flow into the neurons to inhibit the excitability of the neurons. Right, so um, there's a specific antidote for benzodiazepine which is called flumazenil. So it acts competitively, right? So, but bear in mind the usage of it has to be monitored and titrated carefully uh, because it can. If you give them a, if you switch the whole system from a very uh, depressed one into a very um, excited one, so it can cause seizure and also arrhythmia, right? Which can be also fatal to the person. So for chronic dependence of it, you can actually uh, it might also cause acute withdrawal syndromes when you use flumazenil. So again, uh, the person has to be monitored uh, pretty carefully. Right, so next we'll talk a little bit about GHB, which is called gamma hydroxybutyrate. So it also acts on the neuron, also on our favorite GABA receptor. <laughs> right, so uh, this is actually uh, could be 
uh, abused as a date rape or a club drug. So because it's a clear liquid or white powder upon addition to the food or drinks, it can cause no color, no odor. The only hint is that the drink might taste slightly salty. Right, it can also be abused chronically for some um, euphoria effects or increased sexual um, pleasantness. Right, so um, at lower doses of the GHB, it can mainly bind to the ionic channels of the GABA. Uh, but at higher doses, it can also bind to the um, G protein couple receptors of the GABA. Right, so because it's potential of being abused and to be used wrongly, and also it can it's already in the dangerous drug list uh, since last year. So there's a lot of potential GHB antagonists. So it seems that um, the G GABA agonists, like the Dizepam and all, uh, seem to be one of the more helpful ones to reduce the withdrawal effects of the GHB. Uh, because they compete on the same site for binding, so um, but the effect of this known GABA agonist is not as strong as GHB, so therefore it can slowly disperse GHB out of the system to bind to its receptors to therefore reduce the effects of GHB in the system. So the others um, seems to have uh, quite a bit of uh, limitations uh, because it cannot um, treat certain effects of GHB. Right, because like this is not for respiratory depression, but this um, the phenobarbital group cannot treat the coma due to GHB. Right, so there's also some case studies on GHB that uh, you can read through in the f uh, further reading if you're interested. So moving on, uh, that's about the pharmaceutical excipients that which may cause toxicity. So in this case, we are mainly looking at the allergic effects. So common ones include um, skin eruptions, bronchoconstrictions, GI symptoms, or hyperactivity. Uh, but bear in mind, it's very difficult to differentiate actually if the toxicity or the allergic effect is actually due to an allergy effect towards the active drug ingredient of the drug, of the medication, or by the excipients. Right. So different excipients like the colorants or the preservative can cause all these adverse reactions. Right. So more details you can read through the review article which is included in your further reading as well. So um, a lot of it, um, again, it's very difficult to pinpoint exactly which is it. So a lot of it still remains as a question mark. But don't worry, the whole field is very well regulated actually. Uh, there's this IPEC. Uh, federation which actually promotes the safety and quality uh, use of uh, pharmaceutical excipients so to let you have a look at the website so this is how it looks like so um, over here there's actually a tab on the resources there's some guidelines so um, there's actually quite a lot of it so if you're interested you can actually go through them right so a lot of times it's it's very well controlled, right? So another part, we'll move on to the, the another component called DNP because I'm supposed to cover something on uh, the toxicity of weight, weight reduction agents. So this is something which is a bit getting a little bit more popular in these recent years uh, because people actually get it uh, illegally from online sources. So uh, it's people call it a killer. Uh, slimming pill because it's actually a, an, a very effective fat burner that's why it comes into the misuse of it uh, but you can still find it as fertilizers and dyes and so on and so forth right so it's mainly getting it online so nothing through the healthcare professional so how does it work so um, it actually works on the mitochondria by uncoupling the oxidative phosphorylation system so therefore it inhibits the ATP production as you all know, ATP is an energy source, so it can cut off the ATP production, so uh, transfer all the energy into heat in a way. So therefore, you cause more burning of the fat. So another way uh, of um, this mechanism is that, uh, that people also say that it's also through alteration in the calcium transport, because when you stop the production of energy, it causes haywire of the whole system. The system goes wrong by itself. So it 
causes increase in the intracellular calcium, which causes increase in muscle contraction to cause more heat production. Therefore, it can be fatal in a way to cause fat uh, fatal hypothermia, tachycardia, and also met uh, metabolic acidosis. So it is dangerous in a way because there's no specific antidote. So there's a lot of fatal cases. So um, there's mainly supportive treatment and you can actually use dantrolene um, if you want because it's traditionally used to treat malignant hypothermia. So how it does this dantrolene works? So it can actually limit the calcium release, so therefore reducing the heat production. Right. So another component that we're looking for is actually on the performance enhancing drugs right so it's which is mainly misused by the athletes in a way so that um to improve their performance so um there's few nice websites that actually tells you a lot of details so um so for example the usada so there's a lot of uh, short videos and so on that you can go through right um, which actually gives you more understanding about the different drugs that can be misused so including the like testosterone right what are the uh, side effects of it some peptide hormones growth factors right and also some bitter 2 agonists right um, and no diuretics and also stimulants and also cannabinoids as well Right, so um, there's also a very nice article which is also in your few uh, further reading, so uh, which is by the group of them, which actually summarize the whole information pretty well as well. Okay, so let's move on to another class which is on food. So we all love food, so that's about vitamins and food supplements. And here I've also included Watusi, which is on the accidental uh, consumption as food. So I've included it in this section as well. So for vitamins and supplements, so like any other thing that we consume, so we cannot take it too much over here, or it can't be too little. So there's a, a recommended concentration, which this is the best, whereby our body needs it, and it's just at the correct concentration. So I've tried to find a little bit of information on Philippines again. So this is the latest one that I can find. Uh, Sorry, it's a bit old actually, on the, in 2013. So from the results, it states that um, the highest prevalence of inadequacy was iron, uh, iron, vitamin C, calcium, folate, riboflavin, thiamine, energy intake, total fat, and a little bit on vitamin A as well. Right, so um, it's, um, so it's actually not so, easy to get a toxicity or overdose on vitamins right uh, because unless you really get high doses of it from supplements if not it's pretty tricky actually so most of the time it's pretty safe so uh, i've also included this chart in your future further reading which actually tells you um, the different the symptoms and the function of all the different nutrients and micronutrients that we need in the body Right, that you can check it on if you need some further information. Right, so um, let's move on. So on what to see? So it's actually a fireworks, but because maybe it's small and all, it can be accidentally consumed. Uh, but it can also be on a consumed purposely for suicidal. Right, so it's dangerous because on this all these ingredients, you've got something called yellow phosphorus. Um, because it's more from the combustion as well so um, you only need a very small dose to be lethal so that's why it's dangerous right it's just one one mg per kg body weight so um, it causes a burning sensation because it's it causes uh, from the, like an explosive it's caused it burns the system so um, it still it causes vomiting and can cause a garlicky odor on the vomiting right so it can be acute exposure and also chronic so the chronic one is mainly an occupational exposure uh, in for the factory workers that uh, makes this uh, uh, yellow phosphorus and all as a rodent killing uh, agent right so it's pretty straightforward in a way that um, the treatment is by n-acetylcysteine so 
um, to bind and detox the whole system and get the yellow phosphorus out of it. And you can read more in the case studies as well. So there's also some warnings which I found, uh, again, I think this is also from the government side. So um, in this is mainly, uh, it's also for an uh, issue in India as well. So it can cause nausea, vomiting and possible um, survival benefit from early IV NAC, right? So uh, there's some uh, recommendation from the uh, Department of Health of Philippines. So this is from you all. So um, again, um, you can try some raw egg whites again uh, as an, a quick way to maybe try to bind to the yellow phosphorus to prevent, to reduce the immediate effects of toxicity. But no matter which way the person got it, so sick, urgent medical assistance is required to save the person's life. Right, so we move on to biotoxins. So we'll go through about paralytics, uh, shellfish poisoning, uh, botulism, and also some agents in bioterrorism. So, um, so paralytic shellfish poisoning. So there's different types of shellfish poisoning that can occur. So the more popular one uh, in the context of your country is called paralytic shellfish poisoning. The main culprit is by this toxin toxin. Right, so it can cause paralysis. So the symptoms is like uh, the severe one, like paralysis or respiratory failure is the one that we want to avoid, of course. And the treatment is a bit tricky because uh, there's no specific antidote in a way. So it's more supportive um, ventilation for those which have uh, respiratory failure. So uh, it can be caused by different uh, algae. Right, so... Um, it basically, how does it work? It actually blocks the voltage-gated sodium channels at the presynaptic neuron and also at the postsynaptic neuron. So when you block the sodium uh, channels, so you can actually... Um, and remember, sodium ion is one of the main messenger, in a way, in the neuronal system. So therefore, there's no message being passed, to be in simple words, so therefore causing the paralysis. So it can uh, occur uh, within minutes to hours, right? So and again, it's mainly due to the contamination of the microalgae, right? And bear in mind, cooking or freezing of this um, shellfish of like mussels, clams and oysters which are uh, contaminated does not destroy the toxin. That's why it's a bit tricky here. Right, so uh, we move on to the next one, which is botulinum. So again, it's a neurotoxic. Uh, so again, it also causes paralysis, right? But it mainly acts on the acetylcholine system. So it's mainly due to this uh, bacteria. So it's an anaerobe, so gram-positive spore-forming anaerobe, Clostridium botulinum. Right, again, it causes paralysis. So there's muscle weakness and so on. So bear in mind, it can also be found in cosmetics injection to make you look younger, right? Because if you use it small doses, it only causes partial paralysis of your facial muscles. So it causes tightening and you look young. So, but bear in mind, it can also cause side effects from the injection. So this is from a paper which says that like the common side effects, immediate side effects that the person can experience is from dizziness, blurred vision, difficult to open the eyes, dysphagia, uh, difficulty in swallowing and so on. So, um, but this is not the most common way of getting botulinum toxicity. It's mainly actually from food, right, which is from home canned food. So that's the canned food which is being um, like fermented and they got this um, bacteria growing in it. And the most common is actually from infants. So one of the common source is actually from honey, right? So which is, that's why they don't recommend uh, an infant less than one years old to take it. So I've also included a further reading on the infant botulinum in the folder, so you can read through it. So bear in mind, it can also be misused for bioterrorism because it's colorless, it's odorless, basically it's whitish, so it doesn't come with taste. With just one gram, you can actually spread through air, it's light and it can affect whole great population. So that's why it's scary. So how does it work? So basically when you look at the toxin, so there's this botulinum neurotoxin receptor. So basically it can compete. It it can chop off the snare proteins. So the light chain and the heavy chain will bind to it. So actually 
replaces the, um, the release of acetylcholine. So therefore, there's no acetylcholine to pass through the signal across uh, different neurons. So thank goodness, there's a specific antitoxin, antidote to uh, reverse the effect of botulinum if you can be treated and found early. Right, so we move on to the plants. So there's something called tuba tuba, uh, which is more popular in Philippines as well. So basically, the culprit is the seed. Right, so uh, the main toxic component is called curcine, cur curcine, which is a glycoprotein. In a very general way, it's uh, actually acting on the ribosome. So it's actually a ribosome inactivating protein to depurinate rRNA. So therefore, inhibit the protein synthesis. More details of it, it actually binds specifically to this part of the ribosome, ribose, right, to prevent the effect. Right, so more details of it, you can find it in this uh, link, which is over here. Mm. Let me have a look. Oops. There. No. Oops, I have to do this way. <laughs> okay, so it's over here. Sorry, it was hidden just now. So it's also called the Jetropha Kirkus. So there's a lot of information over here that talks about the poisonous and route of entry and details, etc. about it if you're interested. So um, there's also a um, warning by the Philippine uh, Department of Health as well. So do not eat it, the, the, the seed of course. So even one to three seeds can cause toxicity. So it's very common for accidental ingestion by the children, right? And uh, nausea and vomiting, so you can use some GI decontamination methods like the gast uh, uh, lavage, cleaning of the gastric and so on and fluid replacement because there's caused vomiting to replace the fluid. So do not plant it near the school, right? If you use it for biodiesel, you have to put some warning about it and so on. Right, so I'll finish the class with the, some regulatory aspects. So basically, um, it can be um, some external international uh, organization like uh, WHO on IARC, right, which tells a little bit, focus more on the carcinogenicity of uh, some substance, right, so and also some local um, uh, referral and training centers where you can get information and treatment from. Right, so an IARC, so you can actually group them based on how tox carcinogenic is it. So you can actually find from the website, there's a long list of everything. So um, some you can see, say group 1, group 1 is the carcinogenic, group 2A and 2B is possibly carcinogenic, and group 3, so it's safe. So there's a few items here. Right, like H. pylori, it's yes, it can be, it could cause, it could cause like um, higher risk of gastric cancer and so on. So that's why it's carcinogenic. It's under group one. Some safer stuff like aloe vera and so on, which are not carcinogenic. Right, but here it doesn't mean that it's non-toxic, but it's mainly focusing on carcinogenic hazards. Right, so there's also other um, local Philippine authorities that actually has certain orders or certain laws right um, on some chemicals so here i'll show you okay so this is the website right you probably be more familiar than me so um so here there's some um, information about different comp compounds and the different laws which governs them right so exemption and, and asbestos and so on and so forth Right, so arsenic and so on. So there's some uh, general requirements for the import clearance, right? And there are some exemptions. How should you, and then they control how you label, how should you should you store it, and so on and so forth, right? So there's another part uh, which is also on the priority chemical list. So again, it controls it um, things that um, there's some laws about the toxicity. So some they got um, acute. Lethality, teratogenicity, or carcinogenicity, and then some relevant policies involved. So again, going to the website, it's under here, again from the same website. So there are some relevant policies, and which you can click on and tell you more information about. Okay, so hopefully this would be helpful for you. And also there are some uh, 
warnings as well especially on the shellfish one so on and off there will be some warning about it um, for different places uh, which, which is being updated um, every now and then right to prevent uh, shellfish poisoning right and then there's also some poison control units where you can get some information on from different medical centers that I managed to find on Okay, that's all for the class. Thank you so much for your attention and hopefully you can see you one day. Stay safe. Uh, stay at home, I guess, for COVID. Right. See you. Bye.